Okay, this is where we left off yesterday. It had you construct, basically, another triangle that had the magnitude or the hypotenuse of 25, but with different legs, okay? So, continuing on, looking at this vector, it's easy to imagine a right triangle made from AX, which is the X component, AY, the Y component, the vertical one, and the absolute value of vector A. In this case, vector A, the absolute value of vector A, would be the hypotenuse. AX and AY are the legs. So here would be a, AX, this is AY, and then your hypotenuse of the right triangle, it's a right triangle, is 25. So show using the Pythagorean theorem okay, that the magnitude of the vector A squared equals AX squared plus AY squared. So here, I don't have the overhead camera to show you. Plug the values in to this equation. So 25 would be your A squared, your vector A squared. Then you'd write equals. And then you would write 24 squared plus 7 squared. Do the math, and this side should equal this side. Okay? So go ahead and do that. If you need to stop the video, stop the video and go ahead and do the math. Now, using SOHCAHTOA, if you're not used to SOHCAHTOA, it's just an anagram that shows you what sine, cosine, and tangent are. So, sine, SOHCAHTOA. The SO part, sine of an angle equals opposite over hypotenuse. Cosine is equal adjacent over hypotenuse. And tangent is opposite over adjacent, right here. And we're talking about for any angle in this triangle, the opposite one, of course, would be straight across, and the adjacent one is the one right next to, and of course, you know the hypotenuse. So, go ahead and prove to yourself that AX is equal to the magnitude of the hypotenuse times cosine of the angle. So you have these values. They're right up here on the lab where it has the 25, the 16.3, 24, and 7, Plus, or whatever your triangle was. Plug in the values and make sure this equals this. And then on C, you're going to do the same thing, but with the Y, with the Y component is equal, put your magnitude, which should be 25, and then what angle you got when you moved your triangle, okay? So when you do the math, stop the video, go ahead and fill this in. You're going to plug the values in, and this side should equal this side. This side should equal this side. Stop the video, and I'll and then go ahead and fill it in. Okay, for 20, I want you to go ahead and clear the lab space. So clear, clear all. Hit the eraser. Imagine a vector with the magnitude of 28 and an angle of 45. A magnitude of 28 and an angle of 45. Use what you just did up here to determine the X and the Y. Okay, that's the X leg and the Y leg. Show your work. So. Plug in 28 and an angle of 45 degrees into these two equations, just like you did right here, and find your 
X component and your Y component. Then, once you have done that, come over here, pull out a vector, and find you a triangle in which A is 28, Well, there again, I do realize it's not going to let you, well, yeah, we can. Here we go. So, drag it, find you a sweet spot in which you can get 28. Ah, there we go. Yours may be different, but I want you, whatever you did here, show your work, use the sine and the cosine, and then check your work over here. Okay? Stop the video and do that. Okay, once you get that done, I'm hoping that you stopped and filled that in. Now, reopen the sim, but this time choose the lab. We've been in the lab the whole time. Create five vectors of the same color as shown to the right, okay? The length of each of the vectors should be five, and the length of the vertical vectors should be 10. So it's going to look like this. So we're going to come over here. First vector, make it 5. Get another vector, make it 10. Get another vector, you get the idea, make it 5. 10. And one more. So we have more than one vector. Let's say someone walked a very crooked path. We kept making turns. Okay? So yours should look like this. 5, 10, 5, 10, 5. Click the show some button and fill the chart in. Move it over here like that, and then write in, for right here, this information. We had added multiple vectors, and we were going to do this activity in the classroom, but I'm now out of the classroom for a little while, so your result magnitude should be 25. Had you dropped a vertical, it would have been 20, and if your horizontal would have been 15. So I am going to move this over here just for convenience for a moment. So you should have taken these values and written them in here. A useful way to keep track of vector sums is to create a chart. Complete the chart below using the five vectors that you have constructed, and then add the columns to get the sums. So, this first vector, you click on it, it'll tell you what the values are. Your, magnet, your horizontal component was five, your vertical was zero. It's a horizontal line. Then you come over here, the second one. Okay? It's, it's a vertical line, so it's horizontal. This would be 0, and this would be 10, because it's 10 long. Okay? I'm reading the values right here. And then the third line, it's another fiver. So it would be 5 and 0, 0, 10, and the last one is 5, 0. So this one should be 5. This is zero, five, zero, five. So your sum would be 15. The sum of my x's 
is 15. You did this correctly. If you added your verticals, the sum would be 20. And guess what? It is. So when I had this, you add those, and what you get should be the 15 for the horizontal and the 20 for the vertical. So how do the VX and VYs compare to the chart above from this question? It should be the same. Okay? It should be your it should be your 15 and your 25. Use the Pythagorean theorem and determine the resultant value which the hypotenuse of the triangle as its legs. Compare the numbers, the value from 25. Actually, it's this one right here. So, you're going to plug in 15 and 20 as your A and B in the Pythagorean theorem. Okay, I'm going to scroll back up. Back into the Pythagorean theorem. So, this would be 15 squared plus 20 squared. And then you take the square root of the whole thing. And if done correctly, it should equal 25. Okay. Stop the video if you need to. And go ahead and calculate that out. Okay. Number 26. Clear all the vectors, hit the erase. Construct the following four vectors and then add them like we did up here. So the first vector is 10 and the angle is zero. So that tells you 10 and the angle is zero. 10 and the angle is 90. So the magnitude is 10 and the angle is 90. So here's a 10, a 10. The next one, the magnitude is 10 and the angle is 180. So there's my 10, and then my angle is going to be, well, if that's 90, there's my 180. Okay? It helps if you look at this. And then 10, and your angle is going to be 270. So let's get our... There it is, and we're going to do the negative 90. Or from here, it would have been 90, 180, 270. Okay, we've come all the way around. Okay. I hit the sum. This is where the sum would be. Okay. See? But it's not showing up a sum. It's not showing up a vector because it's zero. If I select my answer, the magnitude is zero. I, I'm where I started out from. Okay. You get the idea? So on this chart, you would write zero. It's no angle at all. And your X and Y components are zero. Okay. Now, it's going to have you go back and reconstruct this. What is the sum of these vectors if the first vector is five units longer, is five units long rather than ten? So, let's go and check. If this first one had only been 5, 
Okay. The other ones were as written. This one was the 10. This one was 10. And the last one were 10. Let's try to see if they'll let me move this over. I'm off. Kind of hard to see what I'm doing with all this on the screen. Here we go. So, what would the sum of these vectors be if the first vector is 5 units long rather than 10? And the other ones were 10, 10, and 10. Okay. So instead of being where we started off, now everything, this one is too short. I don't have quite have a complete square there. So my magnitude of my sum, let's move it, move it over here. Imagine this is in its place here. It's the distance from where we started to where we ended up. So the magnitude from here to here is five. It's negative, but it's the absolute value, but it's on the negative five on the number line. It's an absolute value number, so it's going to be positive. The angle from here is 180, it's all the way around here. Angle's 180. The value of your x component is negative five, because it's on the other side of the origin. And your y component, because it is on the x-axis, is going to be zero. Here's your numbers. Fill this in to right here. Okay, I am going to stop for right now. Tomorrow I'm going to get online, or later on Wednesday afternoon, I'm going to get online, and I am going to work through these two and I'm going to also give you some additional ones for you to work through. I'm going to wait because I want you to attempt extension question one and two before I do. And then we will step through it together. And then I will provide some additional extension questions that are also part of your test grade to see how you apply everything that we've done in these last two videos to see if you can apply it to calculating other questions. So get this part done and then we'll have a third part. Thank you for your patience. Sorry my face-to-face -face that I wasn't in class today, but it is what it is. So let's get it done and like I said, I'll talk to you again tomorrow afternoon sometime.